all right guys welcome back and in this video let's just discuss the first question for the five fun javascript questions which we looked in the last one link is in the description if you want to review that so starting off from number one what do you think would happen when we run the try me function well let's see so i'm going to execute the try me function right here and you see that we get no error at all and you can see that basically this function is same as what we have on the right so just that you know right this is the same function as this one so what's happening here well you can see that we have a finally block right here and what happens with finally is that it is always executed right so it does not matter what you do in try it does not matter what you do in catch finally would always be executed now i can just show you this by saying try return one and catch should return two and finally should return three now what do you think would be the order one uh, what do you think would be the return value one or two or three well you see that finally would always be executed after try and catch are done so you would see that uh, try tries to return one then finally executes and overrides the return value of the function in the case of or actually we can just you know just show that real quick as well let's see how do we redo it command shift z there we go right so i save it i evaluate the script and i run the try script try me script again you can see that we get three as a return value now the similar thing happened with the throw one you see at this particular point um javascript was ready to you know prepare the stack frames and everything and you know just show the user that there was an error but finally overwrote the return signature of this function and said hey nothing's wrong well just return undefined so if i didn't write finally here and hit save uh what would happen is basically it would just throw i hope not because it threw this error right here in the try block when the catch threw it again that was returned right all right moving on to question number two do you know so let's just execute do you no and you see we get false and false well why is that well you see that it does not really matter here if you use double equal to or triple equal to that is because when you compare arrays like this you know double equal to and triple equal to what they would do is they would compare the memory location if the both of the data types are same and it is an array or an object um, they would actually compare the memory location for them so obviously when you're creating this this has a different memory location than this one therefore they do not have uh they do not are they are not equal this however for example if you have x as one uh this however would be in fact true right so this would be true but if you have y as well for example like one and then if you do x equal to y then this would be false essentially what you're doing in this in the statement in these two statements is creating these two arrays different arrays and then comparing them right so if we evaluate this and run do you know you see that we get false 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 but for x equal to x we should get true false false true right so that's how it works coming to question number three now sat scope much wow let's just execute it and see what's the output so here we are you see that the first five uh, numbers are fives consecutively and the next five are zero one two three four now this is because of how the scoping and how var works in general so you see that when the for loop runs it creates these set timeout callbacks on the event loop now in the event loop there's a procedure which the event loop follows that is first of all it runs the main thread then it checks for the queue which holds like set timeout and set intervals and all that stuff and then it executes it executes it when the synchronous work is done like for example the for loop so what happens here is for loop creates five set timeouts but by the time it exits what it do is that it increments this var variable to five right and then console log i what it does 
is that it actually logs the value of the variable which was um, at the time of that uh, at the time it the console log executed right that is the set timeout so what happened here was for loop was created uh, for loop ran actually not created uh, ran five times uh, set timeout was timeout was oops set timeout was placed in the queue to be executed after you know after each of this call set timeout was placed and then set timeout was executed right so at this point what essentially what happened was that i was actually five for every call because wars are not hosted on fall level they are hosted on functional level right so they are not block scoped they are functional scoped so it's basically something like this right however with the let variable let is a block scope level variable and it follows lexical scoping rules so that is why with every execution let was bound to that particular block right so this is a block and when let was uh, g, uh, zero the variable j was zero it was bind it was bound to this particular block of code right when it was one it was bound to one when it was two it was bound to two so this is how scoping you know you would know this if you know scoping and stuff and event loop as well but yeah this is the solution for this question moving on to question number four let's just see what this is so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say careful right here and you see that we get five not a number and one now the reason why this behaves like this is because map actually is called uh, map actually calls the given function with three arguments that is the value the index and the array the original array right whereas parsint actually accepts two arguments out of them so it's a function which does not accept just one but two arguments so a string that is like uh, the first argument which is passed and the radix the radix is the base in which the number is right in which the number you want so what happens is that on the first iteration this is called with args dot map percent five comma zero that is the index of this zero is the index right so percent so it's basically calling parse int five comma zero and when the radix value is zero or you know false or undefined or whatever it follows certain rules like you know if uh, this is like zero x at the front treated as octal and so on and so forth so basically you can just consider this for a lot of cases that it's base 10 if it's zero the next iteration is 10 and uh, the index is one here so you get not a number because you know there's no such thing as a radix one so it will always return not a number for you then the second iteration is 15 with a base 2 now parsint obviously has some problems with the integers so what it does is that it basically skips anything it cannot parse so you see that if i have anything like this with a base 2 it will just parse as much as it can like till this particular one and then it'll stop right so this is why we get the output as 5 not a number and 1 all right coming to question number 5 trick or treat now let's just go ahead and execute this real quick trick or treat here we go all right so we have some strange strange result why is that well we see that math.max returns us negative infinity and math.min returns us positive infinity so if you call it with undefined what happens is the following for example now why is that well if you don't know you don't know in this question yeah it's it's like that because the standard states that um, you can see in the standard it is mentioned that in math.max if there is no argument the result should be negative infinity that is the ECMAScript standard if any value is not a number the result is not a number and undefined is actually converted to not in numbers when it is done in comparisons right so yeah I mean this is something like if you know you know if you don't know you don't know kind of thing 
So finally, our question, uh, the last one is based on the same thing I just mentioned right now. Try to see if you can crack it right now. But yeah, we're going to execute this and let's see what happens. All right. So for some weird reason, null is greater than zero is false. Hmm. Okay. Null is less than zero is false. All right. Null is not strictly equal to zero. Well, obviously we know that. Null is not even loosely equal to zero. Okay. But somehow null is somewhere greater than or equal to zero. Well, why is that? Well, that is because when you're working with null and you are applying uh, greater than equal to, when you're applying the conversions like uh, competitors, not conversions, greater than equal to, less than equal to, less than or greater than, when you do that, JavaScript internally converts null to zero and undefined to not a number. So if you do similar conversion with undefined, you're going to see this would be false because when you operate with undefined, it gets converted to not a numbers, which you can see right here in this example. That is what happened. It got converted into not a number because it might have been used somewhere in the comparators, right? And it said that if any value is not a number, the result is not a number. The standard says that. So yeah, that is why. Well, zero is in fact greater than or equal to itself. That is why this is true. And zero is not greater than itself. That is why it's false. And it's not less than itself as well. However, if you're using equality check, then it's going to stay it is, right? So it's only going to equality, uh, return true if you pass the null on the other side as well, right? So that is the only time null would evaluate to true. So yeah, these were the five questions, five fun JavaScript questions I think you should know. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.